Hello and welcome to Study English, IELTS Preparation. I'm Margot Politis. Today we'll look at writing an essay on ageing populations and how to organise ideas about it in a paragraph. Let's begin by listening to a young woman talking about her grandmother. She does mainly the cooking and looking after us, you know, making sure that we turn out right, um, being strict of us. But I think part of her being here, like, allowed us to have respect for, like, you know, older people. Yeah, I think from her I've learned a lot, like the Buddhist belief, how to be a good person, honest, you know, and respectful person to everyone around you. She talked about the valuable contributions an elderly person can make. The grandmother has positively influenced the children, teaching them respect and honesty and cooking. Let's see how this sort of positive view about older people is developed in a paragraph as part of an essay. The paragraph starts with a sentence that establishes the main point the valuable contributions that active and healthy aged individuals can make should not be overlooked. This is called the topic sentence. The main idea is valuable contributions that active and healthy aged individuals can make. The writer then goes on with two sentences that support the main idea that old people make valuable contributions by saying what the contributions are. Firstly, these retired individuals could take the role of carers for their grandchildren, allowing both parents to work longer hours and save on daycare expenses. Notice the linking word, firstly. It means there will be more than one supporting sentence. What linking word should follow, firstly? Secondly, the retirees could volunteer their services as drivers for the very old and sick. To further develop the supporting ideas, the writer provides an example. For example, they could deliver meals directly to their homes or assist with transportation to and from specialist appointments or hospital. The sentence is logically related to what has just been said and linked by, for example. This sentence is called a developing sentence. How you refer back to things you have just written is an important way of creating a natural flow to your language. The examiners call it cohesion. You do this with words called reference, which help make links within and between sentences and paragraphs. For instance, look at these sentences. These retired individuals, these refers back to aged individuals in the preceding sentence. And their grandchildren are the grandchildren of the same aged individuals. Reference are used all the time and not just in essays. Listen to the way the man in the next clip uses the and those to refer back. The car's driven by uh, four in-hub motors and the in-hub motors directly drive the four wheels. Power source is the batteries. Those batteries are sort of charged by uh, literally plugging it in at home or, uh, or by the solar cells. He doesn't just repeat himself. He says the car is driven by in-hub motors. To say what the motors do, he refers to them again, but as the in-hub motors. The car is driven by uh, four in-hub motors and the in-hub motors directly drive the four wheels. Next, he says that the power source is the batteries. He's already said the batteries, so he refers to them again as those batteries. Power source is the batteries. Those batteries are sort of charged by uh, literally plugging it in at home or, uh, or by the solar cells. Using reference helps you avoid using exactly the same words too often. You can also use synonyms, words that have similar meanings, in much the same way. Let's look at our paragraph about aged people again. Aged individuals is not repeated in the same form in the paragraph, but as retired individuals, retirees, 
and in specific roles as carers and drivers. Using reference and synonyms skillfully is not just for essays. Let's look at the way synonyms and reference create cohesion and meaning in the next clip on an entirely different topic, the ruined city of Angkor Wat. Right now, we're at Angkor, which is a collection of temples in the north of Cambodia, which, about a thousand years ago, was the centre of a huge empire which stretched across most of Southeast Asia. The true significance of the place is that it's probably the world's most amazing collection of religious monuments. What you see here is a scale of engineering and aesthetic beauty and a complexity that isn't really seen at any other collection of monument sites around the world. First, he calls Angkor by its name. Right now, we're at Angkor. He then refers to it and says what it is. Which is a collection of temples in the north of Cambodia refers again and explains its function. Which, about a thousand years ago, was the centre of a huge empire which stretched across most of Southeast Asia. He goes on to refer to Angkor again as the place and it, and finds another way of saying collection of temples, collection of religious monuments. The true significance of the place is that it's probably the world's most amazing collection of religious monuments. Now let's look at coherence. What is coherence? When writing an essay, you need to organise and develop your argument logically using paragraphs starting with an introduction, two or three body paragraphs and finishing with a conclusion. There should be a clear transition from one paragraph to the next, linking the ideas between paragraphs. The paragraph we looked at earlier was the first body paragraph of an essay answering this question. The increasing number of older people will cause economic problems for the young. To what extent do you agree or disagree? For this sort of essay, you have to write about different things in each body paragraph. The first paragraph disagreed. It said what positive things older people contribute. So the next body paragraph has to look at the negative effects of an ageing population. Let's look at what its opening sentence or topic sentence should be like. However, the increasing proportion of older people no longer contributing as much tax as younger people will put a strain on the nation's budget. Notice that the sentence begins with the word however. However is a linking word that is used for contrasting. It shows the writer is moving on to develop the other side of the argument. To recap, you should know how to structure an essay. Using paragraphs correctly in your essay is important. You need an introduction, which gives some background information about the topic, followed by what you are going to write about. You start the first body paragraph with a topic sentence that establishes the main idea you will write about. You follow this with some supporting sentences that give reasons and provide examples that develop your ideas further. You do something similar with the next body paragraph, but from the opposite point of view, and finish with a conclusion that summarises the main points and makes it clear what you think. And you should link sentences with transition words. This gives your essay coherence. Using reference and synonyms, as we've seen, will help you achieve cohesion. That's all for today. You'll find more detail about today's program at our website. Good luck with your studies.